Tears of the Kingdom's latest trailer revealed a new game mechanic nobody expected, building your own vehicles. We see Link lift a wheel out of a bog on the Great Plateau, then in the very next shot, drive a car built using the very same wheels. But it's not just cars he'll be able to build, it seems Link can craft hot air balloons, flying machines, and even weapons. So, in the latest trailer, we see three different vehicles. They all have something in common. They're all held together by the same goopy green substance, which seems to act as a sort of glue, holding the propellers onto the metal slate here, binding the balloon to the basket Link stands in here, and to stick the wheels onto the wooden frame here. The car has the most going on, but the body appears to be built out of plain wood. I originally thought it could be a wooden shed or animal pen that Link has transformed into a vehicle, but we can see lines of the green glue running between panels of wood, suggesting that even this body has been stuck together out of different parts. Glued onto this are the two front wheels, shaped like dragon or serpent heads, and two larger back wheels, which are exactly the same as the one found in the bog. Both types of wheel feature arrows, on the top of the front wheels and on the sides and tracks of the larger ones, perhaps indicating which way they should be placed in order to construct a working vehicle. There are even two headlights, which are designed like the lotus bud or egg statues found on the Sky Islands. There's also a strange glowing object glued to the back, which looks a little bit like a larger version of the vials we've seen on Link's hip throughout the trailers, and this handlebars attached to a long pole with a wide base, which is glued to the wood below it. This handlebar stick has been glued to the flying machine too. We can see Link holding onto it here, and the glue is visible from underneath the contraption. We can't see the same handlebar stick on the hot air balloon though. It could be there, but it's just too hard to make out in this shot, or perhaps it just doesn't need steering in the same way. But still, the fact that we see the same controller device fastened onto two different, obviously improvised vehicles, suggests that Link will be able to cobble together common materials, like wood and metal, with vehicle parts scavenged from throughout Hyrule. I've already mentioned the wheel, but we can also spot the propellers too found here on Death Mountain. By sticking vehicle parts and the handlebars to an object with this glue, it looks like Link will be able to create a vehicle out of almost anything. But it's possible that this crafting system won't be limited to vehicles. In this shot, we see Link swinging a very strange weapon, a thin stick attached to a Zonai dragon head with a cannon in its jaws. The dragon head is very similar to the flamethrower Link had attached to his shield in the E3 2021 trailer, but what's most interesting is this symbol. It's found on the base of the dragon head, just where it connects to the stick. We've seen this symbol before, on the strange golem creature seen on the Sky Islands back in 2021, but also on the front wheels of Link's car, and on the underside of the propellers of the flying machine. It's possible that the same symbol appears on the axle of this wheel too, but it's too difficult to make out from the shot. But either way, this symbol directly links the vehicle parts with this cannon weapon. Not only that, but the stick that's attached to the dragon head looks very similar to the handlebars Link uses to control the vehicles. They're not identical, the handlebar pole is much thicker, but they're definitely made of the same material a dark green with gold accents. We've already seen an example of these handlebars used on two different vehicle contraptions, so what if this weapon pole can be attached to different parts in the same way? Could the flamethrower on the shield and the cannon be examples of different weapons Link can craft together? It could be that Link is given base items like the weapon pole and the handlebars, then has to scavenge for different parts to glue together into whatever he wants, vehicles or weapons. Judging by the placement of this symbol on the base of the dragon head, where the pole connects, and on the side of this wheel part and the bottom of this propeller, it might be that this symbol marks possible connection points, where parts can be stuck together. In fact, because the symbol is found on both, I wouldn't be surprised if Link could fasten weapon parts like the cannon or flamethrower onto vehicles too. 
Perhaps Link will be able to build his very own tank by scavenging and cobbling together the parts and storm through Hyrule like it's Goldeneye. It seems that finding building pieces will be one of the main driving forces behind exploring Hyrule once again. Link will discover new parts hidden across the kingdom to build with. Now that we've seen this symbol appear on what could be building parts, it's strange that we also see it on this construct in the sky. We don't know what this is. The stone, energy, and lotus bud shapes link it to the vehicle and weapon parts, and its design does resemble a dragon in some ways, like the teeth here. But it doesn't look like it was made by Link. We can't see any of the green glue holding parts together. So perhaps this construct is related to the crafting and building system in some way, but not something built by the player. It could be a tutorial character, or a robot who helps with construction, or something else entirely. This does all beg the question of… why? Piecing together weapons makes sense, but why scavenge for parts and build… cars? Flying machines will be incredibly useful, considering the Sky Islands, but Hyrule's surface isn't flat making long-distance travel on a vehicle as big and clunky as this difficult. Well, what if Link is forced to use transports for one reason or another? Maybe the vehicles are needed to transport things that Link can't on foot. We don't know what this crystal is. Initially, I assumed it was a power source or battery for the car, but it isn't found on the flying machine. Why would Link need to glue a battery to power the wheels of a car, but not to move the propellers? Perhaps this crystal isn't a part of the car, but the cargo. Maybe Link has built this vehicle specifically to move large, heavy objects, like this, across Hyrule. Its position does seem to have some significance. It's sheltered by walls and a roof, while Link stands outside. The Nintendo eShop listing gives us a small summary of the game. It reads, An epic adventure across the land and skies of Hyrule awaits in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom for Nintendo Switch. The adventure is yours to create in a world fueled by your imagination. In this sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, you'll decide your own path through the sprawling landscapes of Hyrule and the mysterious islands floating in the vast skies above. Can you harness the power of Link's new abilities to fight back against the malevolent forces that threaten the kingdom? This not only mentions the player choosing their path across Hyrule and its skies, but also describes the game as an adventure created by the player, fueled by their imagination. Just below this, the site also says, watch the new trailer to see what Link's latest quest has in store, including never-before-seen weapons and mysterious vehicles. So, the adventure created by the player, fueled by their imagination, could be referring to the endless possibilities of this crafting mechanic. It's completely up to the player how they assemble vehicles and weapons, how they traverse Hyrule and fight Ganon's minions. As with almost everything about Tears of the Kingdom, we've only seen a tiny glimpse of this new building mechanic. But the discovery of parts, the transferable handlebars, and, of course, the weird green glue holding everything together really seems to suggest an open, intricate crafting system. I can't wait to see what vehicle and weapon parts we'll have to play with, and what players can come up with once the game launches this May. What do you think? Does this suggest a crafting and building system? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed, or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. A huge thank you to Myth Tier channel members Pappy Chris, Reskylt, Deem Solist, Thomas Drury Wang, Celestial Kitsune, Monkey Gamer Z Official, and Gerudo Eli. Cheers, guys, and I'll see you next time.